happy Saturday. How are y'all doing? I hope well. Oh my goodness, it's raining where I am and it's been raining all day long. And I'm grateful I've been able to stay inside and just prepare for something that is to come and also catch up on well-deserved rest. However, today is day six, so only one more day one more day of our seven days of prayer today's focus point is the truth because god came to us god sent his son to us to be the way the truth and the life okay in john chapter 14 verse 6 and so on today we're just going to touch on some topics i don't believe this will be too long of a video. Before we get into it, I must remind you, I would encourage you to go and watch day one, the foundational prayer that took place on January 1st. Yes, started the new year off right in accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repentant, and then also some additional foundational prayer points. Going in, setting the tone, setting the atmosphere, basking in the ambience of the Almighty God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and then coming and reading so that now your heart is able to receive what thus said the Lord concerning today's word and the words that proceed this one here. So jumping right on in, Matthew chapter 24, verses 6 through 13 read, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these things, all these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me, Jesus. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and receive and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increases because of the increase of wickedness the love of most will grow cold but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved now we can definitely see a lot of what's outlined in these verses taking place right now coming to pass the rumors of wars we can see where the heart is growing cold where we're becoming in another way or another way of saying it numb to disasters numb to the traumas numb to the national shootings numb to that which is not right numb to the uprising and the terrorist attacks the internal the right here on our soil by our own fellow brothers and sisters or our own fellow americans the internal threat. We see that. We have seen where things are taking place in churches that are not aligned with the word, that are not aligned with scripture. But don't fret. The word says that these things must come, that these things must come to pass. What's most important is that you find yourself on the right side of what's taking place. So real quick, I do not tune in to politics. Once upon a time, I would have the news on every morning. And then there was a clip I saw in which they exacerbated a story or they made something worse than it truly was. And I said, wait a minute. I don't think I want to tune in to something that is contaminating the message in a way to bring about fear, in a way to bring about distrust, in a way that is simply a lie. Yes, or this video is to talk about the truth. So I want what is the truth and I want what is the bread of life, which is the word of God. I want to be found in prayer. I want to seek the Holy Spirit for his guidance. I want to still tune in or be abreast by way of conversations or if someone is to send me something, but have the spirit of discernment to know not to fear, not to allow it to rattle my cage, to rattle my peace in any way because I am covered, we are covered. And there are actions, there are disasters, there are plagues that have to take place. It is written and it shall and it will come to pass. The beauty in not what is to come to pass because Go and read Revelations. There are some things that are going to happen like 
probably out of a scary movie times 30 to the 18th power, okay? But the beauty is God has sent his angels to encamp us around us, but not all people who fear him. Therefore, he will come and rescue them as written in Psalms 34, 7. That means Psalms chapter 34, 7. So go read that on your own. Psalms chapter 91, verses 11 through 12 say, For he will give his angels orders concerning you to protect you in all your ways. They will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. How great that is. In Psalms 103, verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, all his angels of great strength, who do his word obedient to his command. This is why I take joy in including scripture when I pray because I'm using the word of God and therefore the angels in their great strength will go out as it is written in the word. They will be obedient to the command of the words that we are using today. Let's read 1 John chapter 1 verses 8 through 10. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. And we confess our sins. He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So the truth of the matter is when we are not walking in truth, we are walking in deception. Not only are we deceiving ourselves, but we are deceiving others. Not only are we operating from a place of unrighteousness, but we are not showing up as our best selves in the world and therefore shortchanging the word, the world of our glory and the world of the truth of God. Let me remind you as it is written in 1 John chapter 2 verses 15 through 23, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That him is a representation of all mankind. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride in one's possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world with its lust is passing away. And we can see that the world is passing away. But the one who does the will of God remains forever, meaning eternal life. Children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. By this we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. However, they went out so that it might be made clear that none of them belonged to us, but you have an anointing from the Holy One. And all of you know the truth. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it. And because no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar, if not the one who denies that Jesus Christ is the Christ? This one is the Antichrist. And it goes on to say, the one who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father, and he who confesses the Son has the Father as well. So let this be the truth, that Jesus is the Christ. Let it be let you be found not worried and loving the things of the world more than you love the blessings, the favor, and the almighty God, as well as Jesus, and accepting the Holy Spirit to be your helper and guide you on through life. I want to share this scripture because this is the truth, right? There are things that we have done and we think no one else knows. I will never share this. I will never tell that and no one will ever know. But everything that you do, everything that you say, everything that you have even thought of is written down and you will be accounted for everything that you have said. So if you don't believe me, I'm just going to take us to scripture. Luke chapter 12, verses 2 through 5 read, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. Who is the light? Jesus is our light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear and closest shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after hath killed hath power to cast you into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. And to have the fear of God is to reverence God. It's like a child who loves their parents so much they just don't want to do wrong. That's the kind of fear. It's not even a, it's not 
a fear. It's a reverence. It's a love. It's just a respect that you want to do the right thing in order not to disappoint that loved one. Matthew chapter 24 verses 5 through 10, 10, 12, as well as 14. I spoke a little bit on this yesterday as it pertained to false prophets or false men and women of God coming forth and speaking with us said the Lord, but it's not really God. You could also throw in apostles in there. So men and women with titles that are not truly ordained by the Holy Spirit or were not truly are not truly walking in that light, right? So it reads, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah, and they will deceive many. You are going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed because these things must take place. And I've read that already, but I wanted to make sure I captured that first half, that people will come in the name of God. They will come as if they are the sent one. And that is not true, but keep this in the back of your mind that it must come to pass. When it does happen, you just know what times we are in, that we are in that hour. For none of us know the hour at which Jesus is to return, but when we're seeing these signs, we things unfolding. We are in the hour of being able to tell what is taking place in the spiritual realm. We're gonna read this and then we're gonna go ahead and close in prayer. So I'm in Revelations chapter 22. Chapter 22 is the last book of the Bible. It's the last book of Revelations. Reading at verse 10, then he said to me, don't seal up the words of the prophecy of this book because the time is near. Let the unrighteous go on in unrighteousness. Let the filthy still be filthy. Let the righteous go on in righteousness. Let the holy still be holy. Look. I am coming soon and my reward is with me to repeat, repay each person according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. 14, blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by its gates. Verse 15, outside are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to attest these things to you for the churches. I am the root and descendant of David, the bright morning star. Verse 21 of the last chapter in Revelations, which is Revelations 22, reads, The grace of the Lord Jesus be with everyone. Amen. So may this reading be an edification to you. May you walk in truth as it is written. Read these chapters and really reflect repent 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 i can't say that times over when you are able to identify those areas in your life acknowledge those areas and state i am not well here i need to forgive here i am not doing the right things here i should be more of a servant i should be out here giving to the less fortunate not turning my nose up i should walk in humbleness and meekness i should walk in joy and so father god we thank you for this moment that you have blessed us with we thank you for bringing us in and through january 6th of 2024 heavenly father your word in psalms Chapter 103, verse 20 reads, Bless the Lord, all his angels of great strength who do his word, obedient to his command. And as we have learned how the angels go out and they hearken their ears and their instructions from you as your word goes forth. So I pray that your word and the angels that you have encamped around us will go forth and keep us guarded, covered, and protected. Luke chapter 12, verse 7 reads, Indeed, the hairs of your head are all counted. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. So God, I pray that we do not operate from a place of fear in the name of Jesus, but we understand that we are precious to you. We understand your thoughts that you have toward us. We understand the plans that you have toward us, Lord. And as the world grows more wicked and hearts become more cold, may we fear not. And we know as it is written in Joshua chapter one, verse nine, that you have commanded us to be strong and courageous. You have commanded us to be the head and not the tail. You have commanded us to walk with the authority that you have invested in us. You have commanded us to operate from a place of being lenders and not borrowers. You have op you have commanded us and put us in the seat and put us in the position of being the head and not 
not the tail. You have given us the authority to trample over all scorpions and serpents in the name of Jesus. You have given us the authority to call a thing a thing. You have given us the authority as it is written in Matthew chapter 12 or 15 to uproot the things not planted by you, Heavenly Father. You have given us the knowledge and the wisdom to understand that we can come before you, but only come before you after we have forgiven our brothers and sisters. Only come before you with a pure heart. Only come before you after repentance and when we are cleansed. To only come before you in the name of Jesus with thanksgiving on our hearts and praise and glory and worshiping you, Heavenly Father. May we spend more time with you and more time in your word. Decrease in us so that you can increase in us. I pray that you will go forth and we are found worthy to receive the gifts, the same gifts and favor that you blessed Rebecca with, Esther with, the same gifts and favor and restoration and double for our trouble and triple for our trouble as you gave Job the same restoration, the same breakthrough, the same interpretation and wisdom that you gave Solomon. May we be found worthy to receive the same gifts of understanding interpretation of dreams and visions that you gave Daniel, understanding uh, and a deeper understanding of your word and the parables that go forth. I thank you for your word in Proverbs chapter 6 verses 30 through 35. This is for someone, this is definitely for someone who is going through something and you have been giving and you have been praying, you are paying forth your tithes and such, and you don't see anything coming to pass. Listen to this here scripture. People don't despise the thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is hungry. Still, if caught, he must pay seven times as much. He must give up all the wealth in his house. The one who commits adultery lacks sense. Whoever does so destroys himself. He will get a beating and dishonor and his disgrace will never be removed. For jealousy enrages a husband and he will show no mercy when he takes vengeance. He will not be appeased by anything or be persuaded by lavish brides. So let's break this down in Jesus name. Heavenly Father, we call to us and we decree and declare right now that everything that the thief has stolen and who is the thief? The thief is the devil who comes to kill, steal and destroy. Everything that he has taken out of our life, your words taken away from us, everything that he has hindered, everything that he has made stagnant in the name of Jesus. Your word says that in verse 30 31, still if caught, he must pay seven times as much. So we call forth right now that everything that has been taken away from us, everything that has been on hold is called back to us seven times as much. It is called back to us with God's speed. It is called back to us and we will receive it before the year is out. I thank you, Holy Spirit. And, and going on down into the one who commits adultery, that lacks sense. May you be awakened as you read, as you hear this word. May you not destroy yourself. May you not be found committing adultery, man or woman. In the name of Jesus, re repent for your sin of adultery. Stop your actions for a jealous, enraged husband will show no mercy when they take revenge. For a jealous, enraged wife will show no mercy when she takes revenge. So let it be said that you repented. Let it be said on this day on heaven and earth, January 6th, that you are forgiven. Hallelujah. I thank you in the name of Jesus. The truth of the matter is vengeance is the Lord. If you feel as if someone is coming against you, you don't need to take action. You need to take it to God. And I seal this prayer, Lord. Any and everything that we will rebuke, any and everything that we will repent, any and everything that we will denounce and detach away from us, it shall not come back. I pray that you will enlighten us, that you will open up our mind, that you will give us a deeper discerning and an understanding of what it is that we are doing to allow the attack of the enemy to come in, to allow the attack of the enemy to come in to attack finances, to attack marriages, to attack relationships, to attack prosperity, to attack promotion, to attack us. Lord, just give us that understanding so that we can do right, so that we can forgive, so that we can turn away from our wicked ways, and so that we can walk in a place of truth and righteousness, God, because the hour, the hour is coming when you will return, and we don't know when that hour is. But let us be found doing your works, God. Because it is written in Matthew that when the master is to return, 
and he finds his servants working, they will be rewarded. But when he is to return and he finds them beating others, he finds them drunken, then they will be beaten and they will be put to death. Let it not be said that any of us were put to death, but that we were found working and that our name is written in the book of life and that we will spend life eternal. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to highlight, oh, I hope I can find it. There was a scripture, was it in Matthew? And it was attesting to the beauty of heaven and just how the, the rivers will flow from the throne of God and how there are trees on each side. There's a total of 12 trees and those 12 trees bear new fruit every month and how there is no sin and there is no um, memory of anything evil or bad and that there is just joy and peace. And, and I'm not sure exactly where that was in Matthew, but how beautiful it is to reside in a place where the, where the water is crystal clear is what it was saying and where there is no darkness and that we don't even need a sun. We don't need the stars. We don't need the moon because the light of God, the radiance of God will shine upon us. Hallelujah. Let it be said that we are found in that place. All right, y'all. Tomorrow is the conclusion of our seven days of prayer. And I hope that it's been good to you. I hope that it has been good to you as it has been good to me. All right, y'all enjoy the rest of y'all Saturday. Be blessed until next time. Peace.